We've been talking a lot about stress and how we can use our yoga practice to combat stress. And a lot of times stress shows up in the body. And when this happens, it shows up in the form of tension. And we usually know that it's there because we have little knots in our body. And these knots are um, lactic acid buildup that come from over contracting the muscles. So it could be a lot of things. It could be bad posture that causes us to over contract the muscle. It could be stress, um, how we're sitting, all of these things, um, even like overexerting physically, we can injure ourselves and we can get these lactic acid um, knot buildups in the body. But today we're focusing on the knots that come from stress. And most of the time, um, the stress shows up in the traps, the triangular muscle right around the neck and the shoulders, or it shows up in our hips or in our low back. And when we get these knots, what happens is that we have decreased blood flow to the body. So we have to open up and stretch. And as we stretch the muscles, uh, the body sends more blood to these places and our circulation and sense of well-being are both increased. Where the stress shows up in our body tells us a lot about the sources of the stress. So when we're holding the stress in our neck or our shoulders, a lot of times that is associated with being overburdened. So sometimes um, we could get pain in this area just because of how we're sitting. Maybe we're sitting in a chair or we're hunched over our phones for long periods of time. So the front body, the front of the chest and shoulders become shortened and we're overstretching the back and that can cause tension. Um, a lot of times as people get older, they have more tension in these areas. And it's because, like I said, energetically, it's associated with carrying um, too many burdens, too many responsibilities. And it seems that the older we get, the more responsibilities we have. So if you've ever heard the saying, um, the weight of the world is on your shoulders, that's really a real thing because as we feel like we're carrying so much weight, that tension shows up all through this area. And also the, this area of the body is associated with the fifth chakra, the throat chakra. And so sometimes if we're not um, speaking and communicating clearly, we're not saying what we mean or meaning what we say, the throat chakra can become blocked. And as the throat chakra um, becomes blocked, we can feel that tension in this part of the body also. And also, uh, sometimes the throat chakra becomes out of balance when we're not able to forgive, when we're holding on to unforgiveness, these negative emotions can show up as tension in the body. People also carry a lot of stress in the hips, and there are a lot of um, emotional implications there as well. So when the front of the hips feels tight, like the psoas and the hip flexors, that's associated with the fear of the future fear of what's to come, maybe a fear of taking a new risk or embracing a new opportunity. And if the glutes or the back of the hips feel tight or you have pain in that area, um, that can be a sign of holding on to past relationship troubles and negative emotions in that way. When the hips feel tight, a lot of times that's associated with sexual dysfunction, um, like a sense of being inflexible or rigid. Uh, it can also have to do with relationships. A lot of relationship stress is stored in the hips. And not just romantic relationships, but even like work relationships, personal family relationships. Stress for many of that can be stored in the hips. And the hips are associated with the second chakra, the Swatisthana or the sacral chakra. And so this is all about our sensuality and our sense of creativity. Um, and just that sense of like being fluid. So when you're feeling stuck or like you can't go any further into a pose or you know, you're feeling that tightness in the hips, a lot of times it could be because there's trouble with the sacral chakra. Stress in the low back is associated, um, tension in the low back is associated with stress from repressed anger. So any type of anger that you're feeling, especially anger that maybe you've been holding on to for a long time, it often shows up in the body in the low back. Um, and this part of the body is also uh, connected to the first chakra, the root chakra. And a lot of times it's all about survival, right? It's about having our basic needs met. 
So a lot of times if people are worried about um, shelter or food or how they're going to meet their basic needs for survival, maybe financial troubles, this shows up as uh, tension or pain in the low back area. In this sequence for stress relief, we're going to stretch out the areas where the body tends to hold the most tension. And by stretching these areas, we're going to increase the blood flow to these areas. And as the blood flow increases to these areas, the blood vessels are actually going to widen to make space for more blood. And the heart rate is going to increase just a little bit, improving our circulation. So let's get started. Coming into Warrior Two. I have my right foot in front, but you can really start on either side. Flip the front palm to the side. And as you flip the front palm up to the sky, lean back on an inhale, reverse your warrior, really stretch out that right side body. Take a big inhale here. And if you're holding tension in the shoulders, you could grab onto that right wrist and really pull that wrist back Give a nice, nice stretch. As you exhale, we're gonna flow over into extended side angle. Really lengthen through the left fingertips and seal off through the outer edge of the left foot. Maybe turn the gaze up if that feels good. And then flow back and forth here just a few times, moving at your own pace with your own breath as we increase blood flow to the side body. Open the hips, release any tension we're holding in the hips, and then we'll pause, straighten both legs, turn the toes out to the sides, and then bend the knees as if we're coming into goddess pose, and we're gonna take a few around the worlds. So on an inhale, move around the world, Exhale as you fold forward. Feel free to pause here and sway a little bit, releasing any tension you have in the back and the shoulders. And then keep moving around the world. Don't worry about how it looks. Just enjoy how it feels. And when you're ready, you can switch directions. Pause anywhere that feels good. And then we'll all meet at the bottom. Straighten the legs. Maybe sway back and forth a little as if you could draw circles on the ground. And when you're ready, lift halfway on an inhale. Hands come to the hips and we rise to stand. Left toes point out towards the short edge of the mat. Turn the back right toes in slightly. Bend the front knee, coming back into warrior two on the opposite side. Flip the front palm to the sky. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Option to grab onto that left wrist with the right hand and really open up the left side if that feels good. And then we release. Come on into your extended side angle on an exhale. See how long that right side body can get without collapsing into the left. Maybe you turn the gaze up and then we'll flow back and forth with the breath, inhaling to reach back and exhaling to come into extended side angle. Increase the blood flow through the hips. Pause and center, come back to warrior two, straighten both legs, heel toe the feet in a little. Take an inhale, reach up, lean back. Exhale, forward fold. Hook the big toes with the peace fingers and flare the elbows out to the sides. Imagine that any tension you're holding in the low back, in the shoulders, in the neck, could all drip right out of the crown of the head. 
And on the inhale, lift the belly a little more. And on the exhale, let the spine pour out just a little longer. And when you're ready, inhale, hands to hips, lift halfway. And we rise to stand. Thank you for sharing this brief practice with me today. Namaste.